Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to another reading wrap up. This one I promise will be relatively short because I only have three books to talk about from the last two weeks. I have been reading a lot, um, but I haven't been finishing books very quickly. I just have split my attention between so many things right now. And you know what? That's okay. Sometimes that's just life and I'm enjoying it. So with that, let's get into the three books I have to talk about today. First up is Antarctica by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a pretty hefty tome and I listened to it on audiobook and I really enjoyed it as an audiobook. I have some criticisms of this, but in general, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I'm not going to say that this felt like a fluff novel from Robinson, but um, I, I feel like I enjoyed it on a pretty surface level with its sense of adventure and like the, the sense of wonder of the place of Antarctica. I'm not so sure that I deeply engaged with some of the more like political, economic, philosophical discussions in the book. We'll come back around to that in a moment. So Antarctica follows three main characters as they are, as you might expect, in Antarctica. The first is Val, who is an expedition leader in Antarctica, where she works regularly. The second is Wade, who he works for a senator back in Washington, D.C. And then X, who is kind of like a general assistant for the organization that provides like the infrastructure and basic grunt work in Antarctica. So he's not like a scientist or a researcher based there, but he works for the company that supports those people. Um, and their paths intersect. Their relationships with each other are kind of a core part of the people in the book, like the people side of the story. Um, so essentially, Wade is sent by the senator that he works for to Antarctica to investigate some strange acts, um, instances of, of th things like disappearing in Antarctica, um, a treaty involving how Antarctica will be, you know, used by various nations is up for renewal and the senator wants to kind of get involved in this. So Wade goes to Antarctica to poke around and find out the real story behind acts of sabotage or missing things in Antarctica. While he is there, he runs into Val, who as I said is an expedition leader, and um, she regularly takes like tourists around to recreate expeditions of like Shackleton or Scott or the Swedish guy whose name I just forgot. Uh, anyway, it'll come to me eventually. Um, Val <laughs> is one of my favorite characters in the book. She's like an extreme athlete uh, who is struggling with like trying to ha do a job, make a living that will allow her to be in the places doing this thing that she loves, but dealing with people, dealing with tourists, people who are just not on her level um, out in the wilderness is very challenging for her. Um, and then X, as I said, he he's just sort of a general grunt worker there, but he's um, he's got some grand ideas about like <laughs> dealing with capitalist structures and he's into philosophy and stuff. He was dating a Val prior. They had kind of a weird breakup. He's still pining for her. She feels bad about how she treated him. But then also when Wade meets Val, he's like, whoa, I did not know until now that really tall women are my jam. And she's also kind of interested in him. So <laughs> the first half of this book is, um, as I described it before, uh, people pining for each other in Antarctica. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but the first like literally half of this book, 250 some odd pages, is character introductions, wandering around Antarctica, this exploration of the history of, of humans being in Antarctica, and just what it takes to survive there, to, to live there, you know, while you're stationed there. And people thinking about each other. <laughs> and I think it's because in an extreme environment like this, which is, you know, it's so harsh, it's so isolating, but it's also, there's that, it's invigorating, there's that sense of adventure and connecting with yourself and with the others who are there, like it's a bonding experience. So I think that's where the relationships between people became so important. Um, you go through things, you meet people in such unusual circumstances, and it kind of, you know, 
you click a little bit. Um, so for the first half of this book, I thought, what is the point of this? And then it kicks into high gear in the second half with a, kind of the bottom falling out of the situation in Antarctica because a lot of the infrastructure there is sabotaged and these acts of eco-terrorism shut everything down, people get stranded, and it's kind of a race to survive, <laughs> like to get back to civilization, figure out what happened, and deal with the consequences of this. The book ends with a lot of discussions of uh, policy going forwards in Antarctica. And that is the thing that kind of bugged me about this. Um, I really enjoyed the ride here. I thought the topic of this book was really interesting, but I think it suffers from like two flaws, which are pretty typical of Robinson's novels now that I've read quite a few of them. The first is that uh, and this is not a really harsh criticism from me by any means, but um, I do not read Robinson's novels for <laughs> complex, deep characterization. Um, a lot of his characters are stock characters. Um, and I really felt that in this book. For whatever reason, um, I was like, hey, Cynthia, or what's her name? She's exactly like Mary, and who was it? Diane, who also worked in the NSF from Ministry of, in the, of the Future and the Science and the Capital trilogy. Wade felt very similar to previous characters from other books. It just went on and on. I got to the point where I felt like I could pretty much guess everybody's personality and role right as they were introduced. And then I could predict what they were going to care about, what they were going to talk about, their opinions on things. And so the whole book is just steamrolling towards this, the the conversations at the end, where people are really trying to like have this forum and nail down the future of Antarctica. It's very political, it's about environmentalism and all these different, you know, parties with different interests in this place. And it also felt really familiar and all the characters kind of sounded the same. They kind of spoke the same way, same vocabulary, just same intonations. Maybe I noticed this more because I was listening to the audiobook, but it started to really bug me. In the final like chapters of the book, I was just like sitting back going, people don't really talk like this and I'm having a hard time remembering who's speaking because everybody sounds the same. It was a bit odd. But once again, it might be because I was listening to it on audio. So that was, yeah, the real flaw in this book for me was just how familiar and predictable the like human aspect of it was. Everything else, great. And yeah, so I enjoyed this. Glad I finally read it. And it was better than I expected it to be. Next up, something completely different. I read The Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. This is a full-length middle grade graphic novel about a young person who is trying to find um, her place in her community. She wants to be useful, but she also has um, this dream of experiencing a different way of life. Um, her community is nocturnal and she helps keep the like moon moths that their community depends on, but she wants to see the daylight. <laughs> um, so this is a really sweet, gentle story, I think about finding your place, finding what you want to do and realizing you know, your importance in your community and being valued and such. I feel like it had really good messages. I just thought it was really sweet and lovely to read. And I, I love Kay O'Neill's work. I wish I had more to really say about this because I felt like it was an important story, but mostly I just enjoyed it. And it was kind of a nice soothing thing to read this past week when things got a bit crazy. And lastly, another audiobook that I listened to is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. Um, this is an ARC. I got it from Libro FM, and I blasted through this in about two days without realizing that the book doesn't come out until like July. <laughs> so I apologize for talking about something that's not coming out for quite a while. But this is a contemporary romance, kind of like a second chance romance between. Um, 
Ama, who is a wedding planner, and Elliot, who is a florist. They had previously been in a relationship as well as worked together, um, working on weddings and events. Um, but something happened between them, they, they broke up, and they haven't seen each other or interacted in any way in two years. And then they both get the chance to work on a huge celebrity wedding that may make their careers. So they're kind of forced back together and have to, they get, they get an opportunity to kind of work through through things and try again. I I quite enjoyed this. <laughs> um, the only thing that I kind of mm, feel wishy-washy about is Ama herself because um, she has some issues she really needs to deal with and I felt like everybody in the story realized that except for her and it was kind of frustrating. So I really loved Elliot he was great. I loved his personality. He's kind of the the grumpy to Amma's more like perky, sunshiny personality. But I thought he was a very practical person. Um, he likes his job. He's good at his job. And he's like the best person to have around when things get crazy. And I just liked, I like he was very level-headed and he seemed to know his own emotions very well. And probably that's what frustrated me so much about Amma because She's got some serious issues she needs to unpack, but I think by the end of the book, she still hasn't like really acknowledged those things. And it made me feel frustrated for like the future of her life, of her relationships, because yes, you know, it's a romance. There's a happily ever after, but at the same time, she never really dealt with the serious issue that caused everything to fall apart in the first place. So basically what I'm saying is that the end of the book, there should have been a lot more conversation and people opening up and having like this serious conversation about what happened and how to deal with that. And instead it was just like, oh no, we're happy we love each other. End of story. Anyway, I still really like this. I found it very amusing and it is the first time that I've listened to a romance novel and really enjoyed the experience. This is actually pretty like graphic and steamy in parts and I thought that would make me feel very awkward while listening to it, but I thought the narration was really well done and it probably also helped it was dual POV with different narrators, so you have a male and a female narrator and it just it worked really well for me, so I really enjoyed this. If there was ever another book about Elliot, I would eat that up. <laughs> I'm a little bit more take it or leave it with Ama though. So when this book comes out in July, if you like reading contemporary romance with like grumpy sunshine personalities, I do recommend it. I thought it was a really good time. And that is it for what I have read recently. Now for a quick crafting update. I swear I'm not going to talk your ear off for 15 minutes like I did last week, but I'm very excited about things, so I wanted to show them to you quickly. Um, the first is these two floofy skeins. This is my big sweater spin of red fiber. I'm um, spinning this woolen style and I ran out of bobbin space so I had to start plying it to free up my bobbin so I've got two squishy skeins of yarn. It's not finished or anything but I am extremely excited. I have to decide how I'm gonna finish this yarn because it is so like soft and delicate. Ugh, I'm, ki I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> the second thing is really bizarre looking. Um, tell me if you can guess what this is. Hint, the nose shape is important. Um, yes, I'm making a toy. I just randomly cast this on last Monday and I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm uh, probably a little more than halfway through. Most of the knitting is done on this um, disturbing animal skin. <laughs> So uh, hopefully this next week I will finish it and get it stuffed. But um, yeah, I like I really have missed making things like this. And then lastly, the colorwork cardigan that I had just started last weekend. Um, I have been having so much fun with this. This is a week's worth of knitting. Now it's knit at a pretty large gauge, um, but yeah, actually it's upside down. This is the right way up. This is the neck hole. I've seamed the shoulders up and there are steaks for both armholes and for um, the front of the cardigan. So yeah. <laughs> Now I'm on to pretty much just straight knitting down the lower half of the body and that will be 
you know, my challenge for this next week to get the, pro probably to get the body of this done. And then I get to worry about sticking and sleeves and button bands and stuff. So um, this has been so interesting. Wow, it looks so much better on camera when you can really see the design. Um, we will not speak of my atrocious changing gauge in stranded color work. Let's just say I'm happy with it. It's going to be an actual wearable garment and not hideous when it's done. So I'm, I'm extremely pleased. Okay. That's the crafting update, and now I am off to go assemble a loom. Yes, the loom is actually happening. Do you remember when I bought a loom three months ago? Well, I finally have it after a couple of snags, and I finally have the correct assembly manual after a couple of snags. So today I'm gonna to work on um, preparing all the wooden pieces, and then we get the pleasure of sticking it all together. It's a pretty big loom. It's a 36 inch four shaft floor loom, if that means anything to you. It's, it's relatively big. And um, yeah, so the rest of my weekend is gonna be working on that as long as my dad is okay with that because um, he's doing a lot of the work too. I'm useless when it comes to carpentry stuff, so. <laughs> Anyway, that is it for me. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye. Wow, I feel extremely excited right now. Can you tell? I'm very happy with life right now. It's awesome. <laughs>